Hi everyone, how are you? I am so excited to chat with author Nicole Fanera tonight about her number one best-selling book, In the Moment. And it is an anthology of stories. We are going to get into that with her and she's here. So let's bring her on. Here we go. All right, we'll just make sure that we can get her on here. And uh, we'll see when she's live. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for joining us and for being um, on Instagram right now so that we can chat about your book. And yeah. just so that everybody knows, in case they weren't able to make it to this, I will put it on Facebook. I'll put it on our YouTube. I'll put it on our um, uh everything <laughs> yeah i forgot the word the online i going to go i can't believe that i forgot the word tiktok because <laughs> we try to be on tiktok and you know what there are so many platforms that we have that yeah. i don't run that i'm just like okay what's that other one called again <laughs> um so <laughs> and let's talk about in the moment we just had lunch and it was fabulous so Tell us how you got started with this book specifically. Okay, yeah. So um, I started writing this book in 2021. So we had just gone through the pandemic. And actually the first, so it's a collection of short stories. So actually the first short story I wrote in 2020, um, we were just at home working from home. And um, I have this neighbor who <laughs> likes to sit outside and just like sort of watch the world go by. He's a retired teacher. And I just um, created this fabricated story story about him and um like none of it's I don't know his like true background so none of it's like based on his actual life but um just made up a story about him and, and wrote it and uh, submitted it to Hamilton Arts and Letters and um from there I just thought this was a great way to use my time uh I love writing I've always loved writing and um wanted to write more short stories there's a little bit of good coming out of that one so I just went for it and that's how it started Awesome. Well, you know what? I always say to our authors, there's tons of inspiration in real life. And, you know, if you base your characters on mm. real people and take different aspects of them, you're going to have a winning combination for sure. Yeah. Um, so with your story, you wrote an anthology of works. So you have yeah. short stories that are each month. So from January until December, yeah. How did you outline this? Did you outline? <laughs> did you outline each story? How did that work? <laughs> yeah, I did. So I sat down right at the, like after I wrote that one, I sort of placed it into um, what would then be the uh, October story. Um, but I sat down and I wrote out every month of uh, of the year of 2020 and just thought about I went back through news stories and I thought about my own experiences um, and I tried to pull out themes that I felt really fit with those months of how we were just feeling in general as a society and as a people and um, I'm also a teacher so I have my own experience I have my students experiences um, that I was pulling from and of course like family and friends and um, so I, I tried to create stories that fit with those themes um, so for example with March so March 2020 was when everything went wild and crazy and so that story is um <laughs> actually the moment of her like in the desert and she looks up and sees her house is a, a dream I had <laughs> it's just like one of those wild like kind of um strange moments that are like you're remembering or feeling things that are important to you from your past but then also um in a completely new and strange world and so um that felt like it fit in that moment so um yeah so that's what I tried to do with those that's how I, how I outlined it and I'm a lot of walking <laughs> so yeah. I, I get my ideas when I walk and so then I come home and write them down <laughs> That, that is such a great um, piece of advice for aspiring authors is mm -hmm. to moving physically move mm -hmm. and get away from your laptop, <laughs> get out there yeah. and you're going to get those creative juices flowing. So that being said, mm -hmm. put the story 
person, you have, you know, got inspiration from your environment, from the people um, that you work around and the people that you live near. So what do you want your readers to take from your book? Hmm. Um, I think I want to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hope, I think, is like the biggest piece. Um, I think with 2020, you know, there were so many crazy moments, so many things that people just kind of felt like alone and isolated and that sort of illness piece. And um, I think hope is like the biggest part for me that I hope people can take from this, just to feel a little bit less isolated and alone and a little more like um, you know, there are others around and, and other people they can share those experiences with. Awesome. Well, I think that that's fantastic. And I think you are able to um, create something that kind of connects us all. And during the pandemic, people had like such a different experience. And I know we're so over talking about this. We don't <laughs> I know. But all of these things. But I think that it was a moment in time where it was just like totally surreal. And can you talk mm -hmm. about some of the themes in your uh, novel? Because I know that there is um, goth there are gothic nightmares. Um, there's a romantic element. There are things about survival, things like that. So what are the themes kind of woven throughout? And is there one that particularly particularly stuck out for you personally? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> um, so like you said, like romance and um, so my cat is like coming over here. <laughs> He's always in the way. <laughs> I'll just show you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, his name's Archie. <laughs> He's a pandemic kitty. <laughs> um yeah, but I think, so actually, the most um, prevalent sort of theme for me is um, is illness. <laughs> and I think, you know, I tried not to include COVID in the story because I didn't want, the pandemic's happening in the background. It's not meant to be like the be all end all of our lives, but um but illness is still like sort of woven throughout every story. So whether it's mental, physical, and that um, that one was most important to me, um, really, I have a chronic illness. And so as I deal with that, I felt that my characters were kind of experiencing uh, things as I was. And um, I, I wove a pit, bits and pieces of, of, I guess, like dealing with that with into the story. And it fits, of course, because we're talking about illness and pandemic. So um, it's not necessarily COVID, but, you know, there's all kinds of weird stuff out there that <laughs> we're all dealing with. <laughs> you know what I always say is that you cannot write anything or create anything without leaving a piece of yourself behind, mm -hmm. you know, especially in your writing, because it's such a vulnerable and personal thing. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, with being so vulnerable and personal, were there any parts of you that were really nervous to have this kind of out there in the world and have it published? And when you sent it to us, were you thinking like, I can't get these words back if they say yes, you know, that sort of thing. Because some authors yeah. do struggle with that vulnerable position that they feel that, you know, it's imposter syndrome and all of these things that authors tend to have because they're more introverted. They like to be behind the scenes. So was there any part of you that was like a little bit apprehensive about making this book sort of for global consumption? <laughs> I guess I didn't really think of it like that <laughs> um, because I always like, I just never thought anyone would pick it up. <laughs> so um, it never got to the point where I was like freaking out about like people actually reading it because I didn't actually think anyone would read it. <laughs> um, and then once we got to the book launch, I, I that was my moment of like panic <laughs> because people <laughs> were buying it and they were reading it and they were like sending me pictures. They're like, oh my God, you know, look at me read. I'm like, oh my God, don't worry. <laughs> Stop, put it down. <laughs> so yeah, it was like, that was my moment of, of like being fearful. 
Um, but just I, I know I've read so much about people being rejected by publishers and agents and all that stuff. And so I never at, at first thought and even even when it went off to you and, and you guys were working through it, it still felt like it was just mine. Like it it, it didn't feel like it was um I don't know, like it, it didn't feel like it was out there, even though it was <laughs> and uh, and being judged and all that. So it's yeah, now it's now it's real. <laughs> well, you know what? I think that um, that's a really good point. We feel like we're going to be judged by what we're saying and, you know, art is subjective. What if people hate it? That kind of thing. That just means you're a real author. <laughs> that's what that means. <laughs> so look at all the support that you've had. You've had tons of <laughs> come to your book launch um which was held at the phoenix and mcmaster and by the way that looked like something right out of hogwarts yeah <laughs> it was awesome if you see the, picture of the book launch you will know that it's like yeah. wow this place is epic so if you get a chance to go there that's the phoenix at mcmaster that is where the book launch was but you had so many people there to support you and so many people were excited to read and buy your yeah. book and to listen to your speech what does that mean to you Oh, it was crazy. Like, it means everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I was so, like, moved by how many people came out and how many people, like, bought the book and just, um, it's just, like, something I always dreamed of. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was so, uh, it was so much, um, but it was, like, so fulfilling and, um, like, life-affirming, you know, it was, like, one of my dreams, one of my big, like, goals in life was to write a book, so... <laughs> Here and to keep, to keep writing, but um, but that first moment is, I think, like so special. So, absolutely, and congratulations on writing a bestseller. <laughs> Thank you. And it's very exciting. It's crazy. Yeah. I know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so, do your students know that you've written a book? <laughs> um, it's so funny. So I don't have a regular class right now. Um, so they they don't really like my staff knows and um, a lot of a lot of my teacher. I've worked at a lot of schools. So actually, it's kind of traveled around a couple of schools now, um, which is really fun. But last year I had a class. And that was when um, I was going through the publishing process and the editing and stuff. And um, it was an English class. It was grade 10 academic class. And I, I told them, I was like, if you can find my bookstagram account, like I'll, I'll buy you a chocolate bar or something, get a little challenge. Literally, like the, in, within five minutes, they were like, is this your bookstagram? <laughs> I was just like, yes. <laughs> so they know that there's a book out. <laughs> and, um, some of them follow it, which is really cute. So um, some of them know. <laughs> kids that age are able to like find anything online <laughs> oh yeah well I didn't hide it. it's my full name like they know whatever my personal one they'll never find but that one yeah <laughs> that was easy that's fantastic and I'm so glad that you were able to share that little piece with them um especially since yeah. they're inspiration from you know maybe that age group as well and that being said who is your book to book geared towards what age of reader um that sort of thing mm -hmm. um I would say like 14 and above <laughs> um so like that young adult but also like I mean there are adult themes in here too um and and some older perspectives but um uh, definitely like the young adult definitely I agree absolutely and you know there are some mature themes and and different you know, things in the book, but I think that it's relatable at any age because yeah. either at that age experiencing it, or you have experienced that before in your life, or, you know, you were that age one time, um, in the past and you kind of are able to relate to characters in such a way where you feel like, you know, reading about your friends or different situations that maybe you've had before and, can you see yourself in any specific character that you wrote? <laughs> um, well, I guess, like I said, like there are definitely pieces of my personal experiences, especially with illness that I've woven in throughout. Um, but I, I think I see like, I, there are a couple characters that are my students and <laughs> um, there are some really strong personalities that I've, taught in the last couple of years that I tried to um, weave in, um, specifically April. So I think that's 
the one. Uh, it's called Falling Star. And this character, April, she is this girl I had last year. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just this, like, spitfire little girl. It's so sweet, but so just not accepted in her community with the other kids. They didn't get her. She didn't fit, um, you know, low income, like all of that. And so a couple of these characters are just students that I just couldn't let go of, couldn't get out of my head. And, um, and I just wrote with them in mind. So, um, yeah, so okay. they're pieces of me, but I, I find that I put pieces of them into. So those characters that you connected with, or a combination of your and your and kind of your empathy towards them and what they're going through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That personally for me as your publisher, um, when I was reading your book, it really came across as putting yourself in somebody else's shoe. You know, and it came across as empathetic and being or understanding of different people's situations. You have different socioeconomic book. You've got people, like you said, who have had mental challenges and disorders and and um, things that they've had to go through. So I think there is um, a lot of information that is very, very real and very um, relevant in what's going on today and schools and bullies, all of that kind of thing. So you're in the right space. That's for sure. And from your kids and your classroom, is there anything that you wish that you could say to your characters that did that if you were have like sit down with one of them, who would it be and what would you say? I know that's a complicated question, but <laughs> because it's it takes mm -hmm. you to the box. Who do you relate to? I know you said you and this, but also your But if you were to sit down with one character, who would it be? What month is it? And what would you say? Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, I would say, and I'm just like looking at it, if anyone wants to see. <laughs> I would say, <laughs> um, I'm thinking about high school Gothic, which is the September story. Yes. So there's two main characters in that story. Um, I'm just going to flip it open so I can pull on some, some things in here. <laughs> um, so we've got Ollie who is um, a non-binary student and Jasmine who is very much um female and sort of typecast into this female role. And this is the Gothic story. So it gets a little weird and crazy and um, their genders do play a big uh, role in the story as it goes on. Um, but I would like to sit down with both of them because I feel like they have such different upbringings and stories around acceptance and isolation. And yet they're able to like bond over that. Um, and I'm always fascinated by like aesthetic, <laughs> I guess. And like our obsession with aesthetic as a, as a people, like we are obsessed with beauty. We're obsessed with things that look symmetrical and perfect. And Ollie is not, and Jasmine is becoming more and more that. And, um, they're just, trying to figure out what's going on and, and trying to basically like find their identities as, as high school students um, in this weird, twisted, creepy world. Um, and I think they would have some really interesting things to say about like what's important in life and what means a lot to them and, um, and what they wish or how they wish people would treat them based on, because they're really treated based on their looks. And that's, that's the main part of this. Um, and again, this part of the story, like for me, it came out of, um, so I was trying to do a lot of home workouts <laughs> during COVID and there were like some online things that I was doing. And I was just like, so fascinated with this idea of like, I'm trying to be self-improving in working out. And yet the people that I seem to have to watch 
in order to do these workout videos have to be perfect and beautiful and all of these things and they have to have everything together and it's like so um just like wrong <laughs> i think for like actually getting people to like do these basic things you know that are good for them that are like working out um and not everybody looks like that and it's just yeah that is that, i don't know if that makes sense but that was one of the thoughts that i had as i put these characters together was just this idea of like not everything looking perfect on the outside and reflecting what's on the inside um, and finding identity and finding who, out who you are as a person. Um, would you give either of characters any advice? Advice? Brought to mm. life for real people, do you think that there would be any advice that you would give them? I'm thinking of a story specifically when I read it for a book. Um, it the one with the girl who has the brother who's the boxer and I'm so yeah. bad which month is that again? Um, that one's Fearless which Fearless. is uh, ba -ba -ba. I think it was like July August. or it's August, August. yeah <laughs> to go back and look <laughs> yeah yeah, absolutely. yeah and when I was reading that story I was thinking you know what, when she talks about like not being invited, being invited to the pool party and yeah, kind of getting flustered by, you know, she thought she was friends with them or she wanted to be their friend and they didn't really, you know, treat her in such a way like they kind of just left left her out. Um, and she was going through her phone and thinking about them while she was doing something to help her brother with the uh, that they had to get ready. And I, I was thinking of that while I was reading it. And I was thinking, you know what? We've all been in this situation where we've been excluded, we've been forgotten, we've been left behind and how hurtful that is. But if mm -hmm. I were a character in the book, I would definitely say, you know what? In 10 years, five years, two years, this isn't even gonna matter. These people are not gonna be part of your life. Um, you know, you're going to find yourself, you're gonna know who you are and what makes you happy. And these people will just be an afterthought. So mm -hmm. if there are specific advice with any character in the book, if you were to sit down with them and say, this is what you know. As the author, I think it's so fun to be able to do that because you're the creator of these characters. These are like your kids, right? And, yeah. you know, in a relative way, in a realistic way, they are your kids in your classroom, but also they're just um, kids in society that we see all the time in different situations, you know, out and about, whether we're at school or out, out in public doing things. And you just sometimes see these situations where you're just like, I wish I could sit you down and say, listen, this isn't going to matter. It's okay. Just be yourself. Enjoy, right? So, advice mm -hmm. for and what would it be? Yeah, I love that you picked out Brie. Um, I found her really fun to write because she is what I see every day <laughs> with the kids. Like they, they have these ambitions, they have these desires, they want to do these great things. And then it's like, boom, they're just like gone. And it's like, I wish I could just throw that thing out <laughs> so that you can accomplish what you need to accomplish and like have some realization that you have, you have a lot more power and, um, personality and, and charisma and all of that than you think you do. And then they just sit there and they sort of, um, judge themselves based on what they see. And so, um, yeah, that's really, really frustrating. Uh, but <laughs> if I can pick out another character, um, would be from the very first story. Um, so her name is Emily and that one's the January, the happy new year story. And Emily is uh, dealing with a significant illness that's going to put her in the hospital for a long time. And so she's sort of realizing that um, she wants to have this like one last sort of amazing fun night. And, um, I don't know that I give her advice more as just to be like, go girl. <laughs> like, yeah, like go do what you need to do because it might be a while <laughs> and don't, you know, don't lose out on you got one more time. And even though it might not be like the best decision and sometimes we get bogged down by like, what's the right decision. And she sort of struggles with, she doesn't want to tell her mom or like her friends what she's doing. Cause she knows they're going to judge her and tell her not to and all this stuff. So she just does it anyway. And I'm like very proud of her for that. <laughs> you know what? 
I love, 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 love that so much. And that is so fabulous to hear you say. And there's so much thought and work and inspiration that goes into writing. Um, what are you working on now? Anything? <laughs> I'm always working on something, Lacey. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> uh, right now I'm working on... Um, a story. It's a novel. It's a YA novel, of course. <laughs> um, it's not short stories, so it's just like a regular novel, but it's a fantasy. And I've been working on it for a long time. So I'm not sure that I will see the light of day, but I would like it to one day. Um, but fantasy is just, it's so tough because of the world building. Like it's just, it's that like, what are the rules of the regular world? Then what are the rules in the book? And I have to follow those rules too. <laughs> And figuring out what's going to work and what doesn't work, um, but still being character driven and moving the story along through the characters. Um, it's been a beast and I'm trying to <laughs> tame it and get there. So I went back to that one a couple months ago. Um, so I'm still sort of playing around with it. And then I have a couple other stories that I started a long time ago, but didn't finish. So um, just really looking forward to the Christmas break so that I can have some time to sit down and not be at work and just take a look at what I have and really figure out how I want to sort of use my time to focus on these stories. That's fabulous that you're always creating and <laughs> something. I think that's so important. Um, just to keep things fresh and creative and flowing. And like I said before, um, you know what? When you were saying like, the character driven drive the story forward. You know how proud that makes me. Honestly, <laughs> I say this hundreds of times, and I wonder if some of my authors are listening and they know <laughs> they're watching this. <laughs> like you get it, you drive the characters, you make the characters, the uh, reader care about the characters, yeah. make the story based around them you give the reader someone to root for whether they're rooting against or for that character so character development we know is so essential and i think that you have developed them really really well and you've got to check out nicole's debut book in the moment you can get it on amazon you can get it on uh, pandemonium.com forward slash it's a number one bestseller and uh, we've got big plans <laughs> Nicole in the new year to uh, get her into bookstores and do some signings and yeah. uh, get um, some different events happening with her where you'll be able to come and meet her and get your book signed. So that should be really fun. And uh, we're all looking forward to 2023 with all of our authors. I've had and I just want to say that, you know, being at the launch party and seeing you with your friends and family surrounding you and People just hanging on to every word that you were talking about when you were saying, you know, from the book and all that kind of stuff. You definitely have made something so special and you created a legacy that is going to outlive you. How does that feel? That's <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's crazy. Yeah. Like I said, it's just. It wasn't real, I think, until the book launch. Like, it just still felt like mine. And now now it feels like it's other people's. Like, it's out there and it's theirs to enjoy and to do with what they want. So it's so exciting. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're always happy Thanks. to see you. And uh, congratulations on all of your success so far. And with your number one best-selling book in the moment, I'm going to put a link to where you can purchase that. And uh, hopefully if you get your copy and come to an event in the spring that Nicole is at, you can get her to sign it for you. All right. You're not. A that. Oh yeah. I'll be all over. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. I hope you have a really fantastic night. Thank you for joining okay. us. And Thank you. I can't wait to see what's next from you. And we're so glad that you're on our team from all of us at Pandemonium Publishing House. We're happy that you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I just want to give a shout out to my cousin, Joanna, who just joined. Hey. <laughs> I will put this up and uh, always a pleasure. Awesome.
I can't wait to see it. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>